Esteban was born on December 27, 1988, in Mexico City. As the son of a Oaxacan painter, Pablo had his first experience in art by watching his father paint. However, it was not until 1999 when Pablo discovered his true interest in art. He and his family moved to the city of Leiden in the Netherlands. There he came into direct contact with the works of the great Dutch masters such as Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Mondrian, and Carol Apple. This helped him expand his vision and create his own distinct way of thinking. Art is an ever-growing hunger to create, kind of like exorcism. Our job as artists is to investigate the immaculate language of life and death, in other words, nature. What started as a hobby soon became a complete lifestyle. In 2007, Pablo began to study graphic design at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in The Hague. There he was known for his genuine way to work. His designs, full color and expression, already determined a signature. He graduated in 2010 with a solid goal, to live from his art and become a recognized artist. It was not until 2011, however, that Pablo's work took on new dimensions when he and his brother Emilio moved to the hometown of his father, Oaxaca. There, the young artist came in contact with his other half, completing the circle of a well-defined and distinctive style in which the art is not only produced, but also lived, a concept established as the language of the soul. Well, my father is called, his name is uh, Emilio Sanchez Diaz. He's a Oaxacan painter. And, uh, and yeah, well, I don't know if it was a big influence, but I always uh, used to see him paint as when I was little, you know. And uh, what I got out of it was uh, his materials. So his canvases, I used to steal his canvas, his paint. And uh, that's probably what I got out of it. He's a control freak. <laughs> he We've likes, established that now. <laughs> he has. Uh, he's, 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 he's the opposite of what I am. You know, I'm like looking for harmony in the chaos. He's looking for harmony between the lines. With the, he's a lot cleaner. And I grew up basically learning English from uh, music and from comics and all that junk, you know. But that's cool because uh, you get a lot of, you learn a lot of slang and that kind of stuff and English is very good at slang. And I love, I love how you can put some really ironic touches on it with, with English because every language is good at something but English hits the nail when it comes to... It's English. kind of sarcastic. Exactly. When you're painting, you're in the chaos, you're smashing things up. And you're, you're looking for something because when is a painting really, really done, you know? And it's when there's the, there's the essence. There's something I call the, the language of the soul. And that's all great art transcends a feeling. And whenever you, you, have, you have reached the line of, that you can transcend the feeling, you should stop. And that's when you have the, the harmony out of the chaos. I don't think when I'm painting, I just feel. So when I feel it's done, it's done. In Mexico, when you look around, there's a lot of sensationalism going on, on death. They like to put it on the papers, they like to put it on the magazines, on the news, it's everywhere, you know? Yeah, in the United States, they don't do that. You get to see bloody people in the newspaper here. In the States, they don't exactly. do that. Exactly. Yeah. So this is, this is just something to make fun of all this sensationalism. One of the subjects in my paintings is death, because uh, I found it so... A pity, <laughs> <laughs> strangely enough, but you know, I like to paint about life, death, um, and uh, the human nature, the psychology of people. It's really amazing. And with a touch of humor. Exactly. Yeah, humor is the, the best spice of life. <laughs> <laughs> You know, going with the bus here, it's, it's like suicide. <laughs> it's, it's so, you take your life in your hands. Exactly, and that's what it's all about, you know. It's a chaos. It's, you don't know what you're doing, and there you're going to the bus straight to hell, and it's a true life and death experience. There's thrills, there's chills. I scream, but nobody hears me because they're so used to all this stuff. Yeah? 
Oaxaca is it's it's surreal. It's a surreal place. It's it's like a beautiful madhouse. You have to live here. You have to you you have to live it to see and to understand it. And uh, but I think the feeling transcends, and that's the most important thing of a great painting is the the feeling. People seem to forget that art is. It's not only a visual thing. It's it involves all all the senses, you know. So basically, a painting should be should be touched, should be seen. There should be some music in the background or noise. Like when you see it, look at street art. There's always noise around the buses and all the the craziness of the city, and it gives it so much. And people like to touch my paintings because. It makes them feel closer to the painting, you know, they want to connect it, connect it. Something I call art out of necessity, because it's something in you, you know, that's why I paint so much, because I just can't stop. It's, it's like, it's like a drug. You have to get your dose or you go. I, I don't get really uh, social. When I'm not painting, I get pretty bad. <laughs> But when I got it out on the paint, I, I can do everything I want. So it's really like a, it's psychotherapy, basically, for me. <laughs> I look at, at paintings as a kind of mirror. I never look at them as painting, I look at them as, as if they are a big mirror, because art, what it does is it reflects emotions. So when somebody sees violence in my paintings, I say, no, it's not violence. I see humor, because I can get along with it, but they can't. They see themselves in it, and I think they're violent inside. If they get depressed over a painting, it's because they're, 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 there's something inside them that's depressing them about it. It reminds them of something. Or, so I think uh, that's the power of art. And that's great art is full of, of art radiation. It's, some word I, I use sometimes. But it's this art radiation some great paintings have and some just don't. What we have to do as artists is to understand the language of the soul, which is this radiation. How can we put as much radiation on a painting as much as possible and create a classic, you know, like like Edward Monk's Scream, you know? It's one of the best paintings ever and it's because, I don't know why, but that's, that's something an artist should do. It should, we should try to understand what makes a great painting great. It's a language, but I don't think there's a, a simple answer or a formula to it. It's pretty much accident and luck and a trained eye. Well, I'd like to see myself in 20 years, you know. Right now I just can't see nothing in front of me of the future. I'd like to live in the future, you know, dreaming up. I'm going to be there someday and then you're there where you're living in the future right now. I live in the future, I don't live in the now. The now is a, it's past. It's the future I live in. And that's that. <laughs>